So it has been so long, you guys, since I did any kind of like sit down chat. And we are having like the windiest, coldest day here. There's a nor'easter, but we're not getting the snow in Delaware. We're just getting the cold and the wind and a little bit of rain. And then there was a little bit of sun. It's just been wild, wild weather. So I thought I would sit down in front of the fire because it might be one of like the last days I get to have the fire on. And let me just tell you, having the fireplace on is my absolute favorite. So I've got the fire, I've got a coffee. Yes, I'm drinking an iced coffee in front of a <laughs> in front of a fire. Here's the thing. My favorite like hot coffee from Starbucks is the chestnut praline latte and it's it's seasonal. So they don't they don't have it anymore. It's only during the holidays. So here I am. Uh, I'm just gonna have to stick with with this caramel macchiato for now. And I like those iced and I have a big like fluffy Ugg blanket to kind of keep me cozy. So I asked you guys to send me questions. Let me know what you guys wanted to talk about. You know, every time I think about doing a coffee talk, I always think of Coffee Talk with Linda Richmond, which if you have never seen that SNL skit, you are missing out. It is my favorite like recurring skit of all time. It is so, 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 so good. The one where Barbara Streisand like shows up is amazing. All right, so I guess you guys give me your questions. Uh, topics, anything you wanted to talk about. I asked over on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram yet, go over there and do that. And yeah, I'm gonna answer some of these questions. By far and away, the number one question I got, which is not surprising, was why did you leave YouTube? I probably should have got caffeinated. By the way, I drink decaf. But for that question, maybe I should have gotten caffeinated coffee. Here's the long and short of it. If, if you're new here, maybe you didn't notice. I took over a year break from YouTube. And the long and short of it is, if I just had to boil it down to one thing, it's that for me and I think for most people who create anything, whether that's paintings or writing or yes, making makeup videos on the internet, there is a degree of vulnerability that that requires. And honestly, for a solid year, I just couldn't give that vulnerability. The truth is that I was going through so much. I think 2022 was the most difficult year of my life. It was a really hard year. It was also really, it was one of the most rewarding years of my life. I mean, that's just the truth. I think it was actually the most rewarding year of my life. And there was a lot of things that went into that. And I, I could probably do a whole video on it, but if I, I do it right now, we're gonna be here for an hour. So to boil it down, my husband and I started trying to have our second child. We already had a daughter. We started trying to have a second child in October or November of 2021. Sorry, the years, the years they go by. <laughs> so, you know, I'm gonna be honest guys, when that wasn't immediately going to plan, already by December, if you guys watched any of like the three days of Vlogmas I did in December of 2021, already that wasn't quite going to plan and it was like so stressful for me. I was really stressing out about it. I was having like a lot of self-esteem issues. I was to the point where I was feeling like, and, and this was a process of a few months where I was feeling like, Maybe I don't deserve to have a second child. Maybe that's why I'm not having a second child is because, you know, I don't deserve this. And it was terribly hard. So that played into it. On top of that, my husband and I, they were specifically my close friends, but he met them through me. So close, close, close family friends that over the course of 2022, our relationships just kind of broke down. Um, and I don't want to go into a lot of detail about that because it's other people and there's some things I think just are better not, you know, <laughs> dealt with on the internet and I deal with them in therapy instead. But what happened was basically I, I had a very dear close friend, someone who honestly was like, in a lot of ways, like a, a surrogate mother almost to me. And that friendship kind of slowly devolved over the year. Um, and unfortunately it got to the point where I had to, to go non -con like no contact and cut that relationship off completely. So, you know, I had that going on, trying to have a baby. Then once we were pregnant, I had this thing called um, vasovagal syncope. So basically while I was pregnant, sometimes the baby, my son would move in a way where it would kind of compress a nerve that would send this response to my brain and it would make me dizzy and at times like pass out. I could be standing, I could be sitting. It was really, 
really one of the scariest things I've ever been through. And you know, we would be shopping and I would just all of a sudden like feel like I was underwater. Like even sounds would change. Like it would sound like if you were talking to me, it would sound like you were underwater talking to me. Like it was really scary. So all of these things like kind of compounded on each other to not only that, I got a new job. For the entire time I've had a YouTube channel, I have been in credit card marketing and I've actually been in credit card marketing for 10 years, except for like two years in between where I did marketing for a pest control company. So it's like, I know, just like completely random. But so credit card marketing is, has been my job for 10 years. And I actually, in April of last year, ended up changing companies. So I went from one major bank to another major bank to market credit cards. So I had that, we moved, we were buying a house and then we moved in May. And then again, all this stuff going on with like having a pregnancy that was pretty difficult um, and had a lot of scares in it. You know, having a toddler, having a new job, and then kind of, you know, going through this really difficult journey of feeling like, do I need to break off this friendship? Do I not? With somebody that, again, was a family member to me. All of those things combined just put me in this place where I felt so vulnerable that I just couldn't get on video and then put myself out there even more because I already felt so vulnerable in my day-to-day -day life. And honestly, the way I compare it and the reason why I said that, because you know, I want to get out of the sadness, the reason why I said that it was one of the most rewarding years of my life is because I truly felt like kind of like, you know, like a caterpillar when they go in their cocoon and when you think about it, like that's when they're at their most vulnerable is when they're in that cocoon because they're just literally, they're wrapped up you know <laughs> they're wrapped up in their little silk or whatever that stuff is and they don't have you know any defenses there i mean you could just squish it anything could squish it a bird could come and eat it like they're at their most vulnerable right before they become what they were put on this earth intended to be i kind of i mean i know it sounds cliche but sometimes i have to think about things that way because i do think that all of life is very interconnected whether we realize it or not I have to kind of look at it that way of like, oh, I was like at my most vulnerable because I was getting ready to become who I need to be for this chapter of my life, this, you know, phase of my life. And truly, truly, I do feel that way. Like I, I feel that way. I now can say, like I've been calling this like the year 2020 me. <laughs> like, I feel more secure about myself than I ever have. I like myself more than I ever have. I feel more capable than I ever have. More capable as a mother, more capable as a friend, more capable as a wife, more capable just as a person that can do what I wanna do and can have whatever life I choose to have. I've never had this amount of self-confidence and, and I don't know, I'm sure part of that's being 32 years old, but I think another part of that is honestly, I went through an incredibly tough year and I now see that all of it was to get me to the place where I let go of the people and the things that I needed to let go of so that I could be fully here and present for myself and for the people in my life that need to be in my life. So that's where I went, <laughs> long and short of it. Um, I could get more into that in another video, but that's just a little breakdown of it. I mean, that was like a 10 minute breakdown of it, but still. All right, this was a fun one that I got. What's an unusual skill you have? And I've had this since I was like a kid and I always thought it was so cool. I'm really good at picking up things with my feet. <laughs> like really good, which trust me comes in handy when you're a parent. Like a couple hours ago, I put my son down for a nap. I laid him on the bed and my phone was like all the way down past my feet and I literally stretched my toes to grab my phone between like my big toe and the next toe and pull it towards me and it worked. I'm just really good at grabbing things with my feet and that's probably a gross skill to some people. Um, there are probably some people that will find that skill much nicer than they should. Another unusual skill I have, just or just something that maybe I think people don't like assume I would have, I am really good at fixing household things. So like if your cable goes out, your internet goes out, you know, like your microwave breaks, your oven breaks, your dishwasher breaks, like, I am really good at troubleshooting stuff. Like, and I think it's because I just have this like extreme confidence that I can fix anything. I don't know where it comes from, but I am extremely confident that if I can just figure out what the problem is, I can fix it myself. Like our heater breaks and I'm like, I'm over there troubleshooting. My husband's calling, you know, the, the, the HVAC people immediately. And I'm like, no, 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 I can figure this out. It's gotta be something I can fix. I can fix this. 
<laughs> like, the same person asked, what is your most useful skill? I'm very observant. I would say all of my most useful skills have to do with people. So I'm very observant. I clock things, I, I really do. So if you're with me, you're probably gonna be really safe. Part of that's anxiety, part of it's hypervigilance. I've been that way since I was a child. It's just how I learned to keep myself safe in the world. So it's how I am. Um, probably part of why I have panic attacks so much. <laughs> Blessing and a curse. I saw a TikTok that was like, you know what? Everybody talks about the downsides of anxiety, but they don't talk about like the upside, which is like, if we're ever in a crisis, like. I am your girl. If we're in a crisis, I'm your girl because I've thought about it. I have planned on it happening. I have already thought through all the scenarios. Like I'm going into muscle memory and I am gonna like get it done. And I think that's the case with a lot of anxious people because I think people assume that people with anxiety are naturally going to be like hysterical in a crisis or shut down. And the opposite can be true. I, I am the opposite. But I really am very good in those situations. It's like I just, everything for me kind of slows down. It feels like everything slows down. I can kind of like think, okay, this, now this, now this, now this. So I don't know. I think that's probably like a very useful skill that I have. But yeah, it, it, things with people. Also, I'm really good at understanding where people are coming from. So a lot of times friends will come to me and they'll be like, listen, this happened with this person. Like, what do you think they're thinking? What do you think they intended? Like, can you help me out? Like, I'm really good at seeing things from kind of every perspective, which is a positive thing. I think it's a positive thing in a lot of ways. Sometimes it leads to me kind of letting people slide with things because I'm like, oh, well, I see why they did that. So, you know, I'm not gonna get upset about it. But truthfully for me, that's been a positive thing because I used to hold on to things a lot. I used to think everything was a crisis. I used to think every slight was like something to get worked out, like worked up about. But as I've gotten older, I've realized like, that's just not who I am as a person. I'm just a happier person when I can let things go. It's the truth. Oh, this one's a doozy. How was your pregnancy and birth experience? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> we already talked about uh, the fact that I, you know, was getting dizzy and, and losing consciousness. So let's talk now about the birth. It was honestly the most perfect birth and the most traumatic birth. And I say it was the most perfect birth because when I look back now, every single thing went so right for our son to get here healthy. Every single thing went right and it had to go right. And by that I don't mean like, oh it was flawless and this and that. Like, I guess I could do a full birth story, but here's basically what I'm saying is, we did have a complication. My son was nine pounds and 13 ounces. So he was three ounces shy of being 10 pounds, which he, the, the obstetrician was kind enough to tell me he actually had a bowel movement between when I birthed him and when they finally weighed him. And so he was, when he came out, he was definitely 10 pounds. So I gave birth vaginally. At one point his shoulder got stuck and his vitals dropped. And so they had to kind of do some emergency maneuvers to get him out. And I don't mean a C-section. At that point, there was no C-section because his head was already out. Again, I could do a full story. But some key points of this are just like, basically, it was traumatic because one, that happened. Number two, you know, then all these nurses and doctors are in the room because they're having to do emergency maneuvers to get my son out because his vitals are dropping as I'm trying to get him out because his shoulder is stuck because he is 10 pounds. <laughs> and then when they got him out, there were a couple vitals they didn't like, so I didn't get to hold him immediately. He had to go over to like the little station where they put the baby and the NICU doctors were like on top of him, working with him, giving him oxygen. Um, when I say that it was perfect, I say that because Last year, we're during Lent right now. Last year during Lent, every single day, I prayed for a healthy baby. I just prayed, God, please give me a baby. Please give me this baby. I just knew, you know, there was one person missing from our family and it was this baby. Every Sunday we would go to mass and at the end of mass, I would go over to the vigil of the Virgin Mary, mother of Jesus, and I would say, I would say Hail Marys and I would just say, please, 
please intercede on my behalf like please which if you don't know what that means basically as a catholic we don't you can pray to saints but you're not worshiping a saint you're basically asking them to intercede for you like put in a good word with god for me basically um it's all i all i prayed for during mass the whole time i look at all the things and all these little complications and then i realize that like every doctor that we we managed to get every you know like just the fact that like you know I went into labor the day that I had, like on my due date, and I had an appointment that day. And so they were able to straight admit me to the hospital so I didn't have to go through triage, which meant that, you know, I was in the best hands from the get go. I wasn't having to wait because if I would have waited, God knows what would have happened because his shoulder did get stuck. So I needed medical in intervention, you know? So just the fact that that happened, I mean, so few babies are born on their due dates. So that happening, the doctor changed <laughs> from a midwife with a couple years to an obstetrician who had 30 years of experience, who I actually had wanted to be my obstetrician with my daughter, but she had taken five years off of delivering babies and she had just come back into practice like a few months before. And it just so happened that shift changed right before I was ready to start pushing, that I went from a midwife with just a few months experience to an obstetrician with 30 years experience, like one of just the top rated doctors in Delaware for delivering babies. Not only that, my nurse changed. My nurse changed from a nurse that was great, but halfway through pushing, shift changed for that nurse, and I got a new nurse who had been in the army, and I mean, I'm not sure it was the army, it was the military. She was like a veteran nurse, and she, oh my God, was so on top of it, was so on top of it. When I look at all of those things, I realize like, everything fell into place perfectly for our son to get here healthy. What really drove it home for me was when I realized we gave our son a name and when I realized that our son was actually born on the feast day of the saint that shares his name, or actually shares the feminine version of his name. That was just like such a realization to me of like, oh my gosh, like, you know, it, it just really deepened my faith and I think that um, it, it just, again, like I just was like, wow, this, this was all perfect. And you know what? Whether you believe in, you know, saints or God or whatever you want to call it, like it was just divine. I, I just believe miracles happen every day. And I think sometimes we just don't stop to look at them. And that was all a miracle. And even last year, that horrible year was a miracle. You know, a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Like it's an everyday miracle. All right, would you do more beauty biography videos? Yes, beauty biography is coming back on March 31st. It's coming back on March 31st. So I, I asked you guys to vote over on Instagram for which beauty you wanted to see. And I think I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna start giving like three choices over on Instagram in my stories. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to head over there and follow me so you can vote because I think that's how I'm gonna do it from now on. They are my most rewarding videos to make, like truly. Like I was telling you guys how much like I, I can understand people's points of view and like where people are coming from. And like beauty biography is one of those things that feeds into that for me because it's truly like, oh yeah, like, I'm getting to learn about the world through someone's eyes and learn about their life and that's just very rewarding for me and you guys engage with that so much and I just like the comments that I get on those videos I can't tell you what they mean to me they are like bright bright lights in my day I have many creator friends I think I'm one of just a few creators that can truly say like I sit down to read my comments and I'm like I walk away from it feeling like, oh my gosh, like that was such a nice part of my day. For the most part, there was one comment somebody sent me recently <laughs> about that I, I um, gesture with my hands too much and I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> On my mom's paternal side, they are Italian. They're from Abruzzo in Sicily. I'm gonna talk with my hands. I think it's like in my blood. It's genetic. It's what we do, okay? I'm Italian American and I'm married to a Puerto Rican, okay? We all talk with our hands. It's a thing. Here's a tip that I have for everything. I always assume that someone's intent is good or lighthearted unless they say otherwise. So if you leave me like a mean comment, I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, like that's a funny joke. Like they were joking, they were just ribbing me and I'm gonna move on. <laughs> like, all right, so yes, more beauty biography videos are coming. The last one was where is your favorite place to be? My favorite place to be, when I first saw this, I was like, immediately, I was like, well, obviously with my kids and my husband. I mean, that's just the truth. Like, anywhere they are, that's where I wanna be and, and I'll be happy being where they are. 
if we're talking like place, it's North Carolina. So I'm from North Carolina. I grew up in North Carolina, was born, bred, raised, lived there. I, you know, I got to live in like some different places for like short periods of time. Like I lived in New York City for a year. I lived in Chicago for a few months. I lived in New Orleans for a few months. I lived in Miami for a few months. Like I've gotten to travel. But then um, obviously when my husband and I decided to move in together, I had to move to Delaware because he could not move to North Carolina. So I moved here about five years ago. It'll be five years this year that I moved to Delaware. And I really like it, I truly do. But I will say that there's something about North Carolina. So where I'm from, I'm from the foothills of the mountains. So I that basically means like, okay, there's the mountain and I'm from like the base of it. I'm literally from like right at the base of the mountain. Like we can be up on the mountain skiing in like 20 minutes. You know, it's just, that's where I'm from. That's where I lived. And that's not only where I'm from and where I lived, but it's where my grandmother on my dad's side was born and raised. And so it's just home to me. I don't think there's ever gonna be a time that it's not home to me. And here's the thing, like it is the most beautiful place, you guys, like it is so beautiful. And not just the part of North Carolina that I'm from, but I mean, you literally have these beautiful beaches at the Outer Banks. I mean, people come from all over the world to go to these beaches at the Outer Banks because they're beautiful. You've got like the Piedmont, like the Rolling Hills by Charlotte. It's beautiful there. And then you have the mountains that are just beautiful. It's like overwhelming to think about. And I, I literally used to just take it for granted, but it's like now every time I go home, I will be driving just like, you know, down like our like back roads to my parents' farms. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I can see mountains from here. Like everywhere I go, where I'm from, you look up and you see a mountain. I just love it so much. <laughs> and it's funny because James Taylor, so he wrote the song Carolina in my mind. The funny thing about it is he said before about the song that for him, what he loved so much about North Carolina was it's not really the people, which I think the people are great, but it's the place itself. I think it's one of the most beautiful places on earth. I think it's the most beautiful place in this country. <laughs> I'll tell you that. We used to drive on the Blue Ridge Parkway. I, I went to school in the mountains. So if any of you are country music fans, if you know of Eric Church, I'm from the same town as Eric Church. So it's interesting because when I hear like those songs or hear people singing those songs, I'm like, oh, he's literally singing about my home. There's three songs I listen to when I'm homesick because let me tell you what, I get homesick to the point that when we go to North Carolina, we almost always drive. And like, as we're getting closer to the North Carolina line, like I'm telling you, like I start to get teary eyed. And as soon as we cross into North Carolina, like I literally will, will be crying because it's like, as soon, there's just something about it. I have such pride being there, uh, being from there. And I know that most of like my friends, family, people that I know, that are born and bred North Carolinians um, really feel the same way. I know army brats that like, you know, get stuck there like on bases and stuff don't feel the same way. But I mean like true born and bred North Carolinians, I think are some of like the most like proud of our state people you will ever meet. <laughs> I know so many facts about North Carolina. Let me tell you what, North Carolina, we're the biggest producer of turkey and sweet potatoes. So you can thank North Carolina for Thanksgiving. But anyway, there's three songs I listen to when I'm homesick and, and it's so funny because I listened to all three of them the other night when I saw this question. And so the first one is obviously Carolina in My Mind by James Taylor. Wagon Wheel, but it has to be the original, the Old Crow Medicine Show version of Wagon Wheel. That's like the one I really listen to normally like when we're like right there about to cross into North Carolina. And then Carolina by Eric Church because again, it's like, Oh, you're talking about my home. <laughs> right now, this is the longest that I, it's been since I've been to North Carolina. I haven't been to North Carolina since June of last year. I need to get back soon because I think if I spend a year away from North Carolina, I probably will, will cry. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I've cried, I've laughed, I've thought. And that's a full day, as Jim Balvano would say. He's one of my, my heroes. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more of these like coffee talk videos. I don't know if we'll always be able to have this beautiful fire behind us. I know it's gonna get you know warmer soon. Honestly, I'm kind of a cold weather girly, so it's gonna be a little bit sad for the cold weather to go, but um, just at this point, just give me sunshine. Please give me sunshine. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me know if you like this kind of style of video and you know, as always, you know, whatever topics, questions you'd like to see me address in future videos. If you'd like to see like a birth story video, I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, I hope you take care of yourself.